Hello, welcome pen friends. Guess what time it is? <laughs> it is ink flight box time. It, I am so excited. It just arrived today. So I want to do what I usually do and kind of take you along with the opening of the box. And I admit I opened the box already because I just couldn't stand it. Um, and But I'm going to try to give you the experience of the box opening and then we'll we'll uh, look at the inks. I've got my paintbrush and my water and everything ready to do that. So here we go. Oh, before I do this though, please uh, know this is a spoiler for anybody who hasn't got, if you haven't got your box yet, don't go any further if you don't want to know what's in here because this will sort of be like a total spoiler and I don't want to do that. I want to make sure to warn you first um, that if you proceed any further, you're going to see what's in the box, okay? So uh, thank you very much and here we go. Let's open it up. Ta-da! Here we go. Here's our itinerary with everything. Let's get everything out. That way we can... Oh my gosh. I am so excited about this. It's a good thing I did open it. I had to wait a while to get home to open my mail. So I just couldn't stand it. This is so cute. Look at that. It's a little button. And it is cute as a button. An ink journal button. Whoops. I get focus here and there. And I got, got a little weird squirrely light. Because we've got a really good cold front that just came in. And here's the seven ink samples, but before we even get to that, oh my goodness, this book. No plot, no problem. A low stress, high velocity guide to writing a novel in 30 days. By Chris Batty, founder of National Novel Writing Month. And that's next month. I know that. The only reason I know that is because in 2016, I did the project. I did it. I was successful. Actually, I wasn't writing a novel. I was writing a memoir. It was... Um, just a little while, less than a year after my dad had passed away and I wanted to get some things down on paper and I, I did it. I got over 50,000 words and I was so excited, I, you know, by breaking it up the way they have you do. So this is a cool, interesting book. I have not seen this book. Let's see what the publication date is. I'm just curious. I love books and I am so glad that I didn't already have this. Okay, text copyright 2004 and 2014. So it's been out a while. Uh, surprised I hadn't really hadn't been on my radar, but it's so nice to have this. This will be wonderful. Anyway, I know we have to move along, but that's exciting to because uh, we're going to get right into the ink here. And we've got our itinerary. Let's see, somewhere I got scissors. I probably will make it shorter. Um, I, I may have to pause a few times as we go because I want to make sure that I don't cause the video to be any longer than it needs to be. <laughs> if people uh, don't have all day and all night, I'm sure, for this. Okay, here we go. Ooh, Robert Oster, Robert Oster. Oh, how exciting. I love Robert Oster inks. I just love them. Now let's read a little bit before we go any further and see what it says. Okay, it says, Welcome, ink travelers. It was almost too perfect when one of our favorite ink makers introduced a line of seven colors inspired by the 1980s. We just had to go back to Australia to visit our friend Robert Oster, fire up the VHS, and watch a classic 80s movie like Ghostbusters while sampling this selection of inks. Oh, boy. Let's read the names, and then we'll get into it. Bass Strait, <laughs> Honey Bee, Dusky Pink, Clear Water Rain, Gray Skies, Whisper Red, and Opal Green. Already that sounds like we're going to have a really nice uh, variety of colors there. It sure sounds like it. Okay, now i got to move them aside. And I also need to, I, one thing I hadn't thought of, which I think I can deal with. I have to have a receptacle for the one I've already done, ones I've already done. Okay, I decided to do it a little different and we'll do it on a panel, kind of the way we do um, the ink profiles and that'll just give us a nice glance at it. So let's get started. I got lots of water here, but I may have to pause and get some more. This is Robert Oster Signature Opal Green. Ooh boy, exciting. <laughs> I just love this. And now you get to see kind of how I go about this when I do them. I just put the color right on the paper there and just paint it right on. And it gives me a nice look at things. 
I got to remember there's only two mils in these. <laughs> Some of my other samples, you know, I've been getting from, I've been getting three milliliters or I've been getting two, three milliliter. But I'm sure with the serendipity, I will still have lots left to play with when it is time. And of course, this isn't quite like swatching. I do try to stay where I need to be. Okay, I don't mind that. I just don't want to smear it all over everything. <laughs> I've got plenty of protection for my desk, that's for sure. But okay, so it's good. That's this is pretty. This is a nice, nice green. Hoping you can see it. Hopefully my perfectionism won't get in the way here. <laughs> it usually does, but but knowing that I don't want to make the video an hour long should help me. There. Okay, we got it on there. Now this is what I just do. I it's very, you know, it's not always exactly the same. I just dab some ink down here. And I try to get a variety. Sometimes it'll be on real real heavy and some light and that's on purpose so that we can end up when we put the water on we'll see what it does shading wise <clears throat> so I you know sometimes go back in and let more stay on the brush like right here so that we have a little bit better chance of seeing what how it moves the paint around and what it does when there's more paint uh, <laughs> ink Jeez, I guess I'm I'm getting back into my art days here. That's cool though. Okay, and then I just I like to not contaminate my water too much because I'm lazy and I don't like to keep getting up, but <laughs> all right. Robert Oster. Opal green. Pretty. I just I love doing this and then at the end, uh, I'll pause and then come back when it's time to put the water on. And we'll see what, what how it looks. Okay, Robert Oster Signature Whisper Red. Oh, we're going to have red and green right side by side. But first, I need to make sure that my paintbrush is very clean because I'm changing colors. There we go. Nice and clean. I got paper towel over to the left there to handle that job and three pots of water so <laughs> haha whisper red so you can tell right away it's a kind of a lighter red than some not not like what I have already so that's cool come in and just fill it in and you know for, to me it's okay if uh if it's real light on one side and darker on the other it doesn't matter how it comes out it just gives a nice uh chance to see uh the range of the ink basically you know so i don't mind if it's heavily shaded on one section and not on another it doesn't bother me at all this is neat this kind of borders on pink or peachy or you know it's kind of light so that's cool Okay, now, that's the only thing about this. I do have to turn the page around a little so I can fill it in. Oop, okay, I went hog wild there. I used to try to make them identical, but there isn't any way. It's just basically getting enough ink on there so that we can see what happens when I introduce water. Which I think is, is really fun to see. This is just plain old 140 pound watercolor paper. These papers, I tried to use one of my old ones for today, but uh, my old one was just so covered. It was just, there's no space left for me to like write on. So I had to pull out a new one. There's something I had from my stamping days from Stamping Up Company. Okay, Robert Oster. I'm not going to put the signature part. We'll just put Whisper Red. I would put that in a title so that anybody looking it up would be able to find it. But <laughs> All right, next. Robert Oster Signature Dusty Pink. Ha-ha. Cool. Gosh, those, those colors look real Christmassy there. They really do. This is just a neat. Oh, I just love this that they picked this company because I love this company. 
the ink, every ink, you know, I, I, I maybe wasn't crazy about uh, lipstick red, but that was just because I thought it looked different. Wow, this is nice and light. Ooh, this kind of reminds me just a little bit, not too much, of uh, the uh, Diatramentus Apple Blossom, I think it was. Yeah, in, in shade, but I don't think, I mean, the fact that it's nice and muted, kind of pretty. Oh, that's nice. Okay, put that on there. Hopefully I've left enough. I think I left, yeah, I left seven spaces. So. Just enough. And then down in the corner we'll write down about the book and stuff. Or I will later. <clears throat> I thought it would be nice to start doing it this way. And I can have a glance. I can have a board to pull out. And then when we're doing the color profiles, um, which I like to do in like little series, we'll have this page. Nice. I actually, I really enjoy seeing the ink on the splatter paper. <laughs> it's kind of fun. You get kind of an idea of what it looks like on a, the white, thinner paper, too. Nice. Goes on real. But this is pretty. Now, I can't wait to see that in my broad serendipity <clears throat> pan there. My broad nib. Okay, I'd like to get just a little extra ink a couple places. There we go. Alright, I think that's a good variety. <clears throat> Alright. Write it on. Wow, it looks like dark, dark outside, and it's it's barely four o'clock. <laughs> Robert Foster, dusky pink. Boy, so far that one's really got me intrigued. I don't know if you can see that. Of course, it's still drying, but. There's some interesting shading going on already, and it's not even dry. That is pretty. Okay, Robert Oster signature, clear water rain. Oh, it's blue. <laughs> I love blue. Let's see. Whoops, I got to make sure this book doesn't get splattered. I don't want that. That's going to be fun to read and work with. Who knows? I might get inspired to get that memoir back out and get it revised because that's been something that I needed to do. At first, I couldn't. I, I It was too soon, I think. Oh, this is pretty. Oh my, that's really pretty. Huh. I kind of like seeing them together even though they're all different like this. It's kind of nice. <clears throat> now I haven't... Another reason I'm doing this is because I'm kind of displaced with my index system and I'm not sure. I probably will end up going all into the uh, Colodex um, one since I ran out of those others from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. <laughs> I ran out of those papers and that's a bummer. I kind of liked those. I had them on rings and I, you know, really liked them. But it's good to use things up and that's what I did. So. Get it on there. I had a thinner paintbrush, but really this one seems to be just about right for the job. It does not have to be perfect. <laughs> I just would like it on there so I can see. Oh, this is gorgeous. And of course, they have a lot of pretty blues, so the story or the, the, the whole story would be comparing it to some more of their blues. But oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. I don't know how they keep coming up with so many pretty ones when there seems like there's already so many that there wouldn't be another color in the world, but let me keep doing it. Okay, there's that one. Let's try to put some of that ink back in there and then, ooh, nice. Probably this one, since they're all of the same company, I could have just written down the color name. <laughs> Okay, on the roster, clear water, rain, I like that name, right off the bat, I like the name. Okay folks, we got three left, let's see, give my paintbrush an extra good cleaning, blue always stays on quite a bit more, let's see here. 
Oof, it's really staying on. <laughs> All right, I got it. Next. Oh, Robert Oster Signature Gray Seas. That should be nice. Right there beside the blue. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, and it's blue, bluey gray. Huh. Now we just had one like that. And I can't remember the name. <laughs> but I do recall something like that. It was on the second one over on a study of gray, where it was supposed to be gray and it looked much more blue. But that, that I mean, they did put that in the name, gray seas. So, you know, you're going to have water involved. It's going to be blue. Okay, it's going to be really pretty. We'll wait till we see the, you know, wait till we do that part where we introduce water. <laughs> I love that part. Okay. This is real smooth flowing. Nice. Okay. We'll do our dot to dots. It's amazing. This really doesn't use much ink to do this. It's just... Just a little tiny bit. Okay, that's pretty. Nice, nice. Oh, I love it when there is so much variety in color in these ink flights like this. That's really super. <clears throat> oh, wow. Huh. Not a lot left on the, the brush. Okay. I hope nobody's asleep yet, unless that's what you want to do. <laughs> now, Red Oster. Gray. Seas. Awesome. Two more. And we got to get this paintbrush ready. Don't want any transfers. <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> Had that once. I learned from it. Okay. Good shape. Robert Oster signature bass straight. And I see blue through there. I don't know if you can, so let's see what happens. <laughs> so it's like a mystery. When you when you don't know already, it's not like you ordered the sample to be a certain color. Ooh, nice. Now look at that. That's three blues, but they're all totally unique. Oh, that's pretty. Huh. Cool, cool, cool. I don't think there's much of anything I like doing better than this when it comes to things like this, art things. I just love to see the color go on. on the paper and doesn't really matter how you put it on you get some neat shading here and there and it kind of tells you quite a bit about the ink I think oh I think I splattered a little oh well there then we see over here some lighter of it but I'm not going to mess with it I'm going to leave it so we can actually see the contrast there that's cool Okay, let's get down these little numbers here. It always surprises me how different it comes out each time. Nice. Whoop. <laughs> Don't want to splash too much. Huh. Kind of that makes it look like that one. Okay. Alright, label it. We got one more to go. <clears throat> Bass straight. <laughs> Robert Oster. Bass straight. Pretty, pretty. Okay, one more. Get that paintbrush ready to go. And what will it be? Ooh, Robert Oster Signature Honey Bee. When I hear Honey Bee. Oh, and I think there was a little 
teaser on Instagram that uh, Tom had on one of his posts on this current challenge we're having. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember thinking, what's that ink? That's cool. Whoop, now I'll see my splatters kind of made a little shoot. Well, <laughs> that's the way it is. And it won't ruin it. It'll just be there. That's all. That was from me, like, getting wild with the paintbrush, I guess. Little drip. I'll try not to go over it too many times so it doesn't mix with this ink. Oh, that's neat. <clears throat> that really rounds out the colors for this time. Whoops, I got a dot of ink. It's going to end up somewhere. doesn't go. See how, how nice and wet that is. That's nice. There. <laughs> I just drew over some color. That doesn't happen too often. See here in the corner where I kind of got carried away, I guess, and maybe it hit up against that. That's okay. We're still going to get a good look at this. Maybe I'm just putting a lot, lots of paint or lots of ink on the brush at a time. I do like, you know, I've, I've even thought of getting some of this watercolor paper and cutting little cards, but yeah, it probably would. Knowing how many ink samples I deal with, you know, that would probably not work out in the long run. I'd get tired of it, I guess. But all the cutting and all, <laughs> and all of that. Okay, so here we go. This is honeybee, so oh no, sir. Honeybee. Very good. Okay, now I'm gonna pause the video and get set up, get a, more clean water and get all ready, and then I'll come back in and do the the magic that we do adding water so we can see how this reacts on the watercolor paper. I'll be right back, folks. There, I'm back and ready to put some water down, see what happens here. See how how the color moves around and what it looks like when we draw out the water. And this is just kind of what I do, um, just dab it, dab it on and see what happens. <laughs> just fun, I like it. And I try to keep the water where, where I want it to go and not all over the place, but sometimes, ooh, there was a drop ready to, ready to create something before I was really ready. <laughs> been doing that lately. I, I didn't used to do that at first. So. Huh, interesting. It's, ni it's nice and light. It does move around. Not as much as I would have thought. Hmm, interesting. And then, of course, it's very interesting to see what happens when it's totally dry, you know, in which we, we may have to see in the next video. But Okay, here we go over here to Whisper Red. Interesting. i do that. A little more. I always, sometimes I, I do forget how much it changes it when it uh, dries. <clears throat> and often I do lay down quite a bit of water just to see what, what it's going to do. You sometimes you get an immediate real dramatic effect. You never know. <laughs> Until you try. Okay. You can always tell when they're bulletproof because it just won't move at all. You just end up with um, the same as what you started with. So. Huh. That's interesting. <clears throat> that was painted on later and it's a little more 
stubborn about moving around. Huh, cool. That's why I think the whole bath test is also so interesting because sometimes it, it takes you by surprise what these inks will do. You, I make an assumption and then I find out that it's not as I thought. That is a pretty color. I cannot wait to write with that. Huh, that one is the one right now that just kind of lingers in my mind about putting it in a pen right away. Huh. And then we can already see that up here things are kind of, you know, pick, it's picking up more ink the longer it's on it. That's interesting. I like to see that. All right. Here we go over to the blue. Clear water rain. Usually their blues do some really interesting things. Let's see. Make sure I'm getting enough water on there. Oh, I did it. I dotted it down here. Darn it. See, that's how that happens. So I'm not paying attention to the paintbrush. Okay. Oh, it moves around really nicely. This is cool. I actually really like it when it moves around like that. It's more things you could do with it in a piece of art. <clears throat> huh. Nice. All right, I could stay there all day, but <laughs> I better move to the next one. <laughs> there it is. Gray seas. Oh, it brings the blue out right away. Get it where we want it. Okay, and this one is similar. Doesn't move around quite as much, maybe. And I might be saying that too soon because it could be as the water sits there, it'll kind of work on it some more. Let's see. We'll put plenty down and then we'll just move along and go back and see what it did. Ooh, I like how the... We're getting... <laughs> I'm making a mess. We are getting some purpley little things there. Yeah, this is why it's hard for me to move on to the next one. Because I start seeing all kinds of neat things. <laughs> I'm hoping you can see this. Okay, okay, we're going to go to Bass Strait now. Okay. That's a subtle color, too. Bunch of water on that. See what happens. It's pretty. <clears throat> huh, that's kind of neat. Got some edge shading and stuff. Okay. That's not fair. I put down more water there than I did on some of the others. <laughs> okay, so moving to our last one. Let's see what's going on here. With honeybee. Huh, neat. I can I like the shading underneath there. I'm probably gonna disturb that, but <clears throat> Yeah, that actually it's got such good shading underneath already. Huh. Pretty cool. Oh look, that's got all kinds of let me hold it up. Okay, it's gonna roll. Shoot, I'm just gonna give you a blind you or something. It's got all kinds of neat stuff going on. Hopefully, it'll dry a little before we're through here. Pretty. This is a nice lineup here. I'm gonna really enjoy this this series. Wow. I th I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing over here. I'm um, seeing uh, several different shades, kind of a lavender, and purple, and blue coming out of that. Gray seas, I like that. That's interesting. Just want to make sure I put enough down here. I think I got carried away in some cases, but... <clears throat> okay, I think we done it. Okay, I'm going to pause it just for a minute and see if we can get it to dry a little. Okay, I'm back. I don't think it's going to dry fast enough for for us, but you know that I will revisit this. You'll be seeing it again. 
probably on the next video just to give you a nice glimpse at it uh, dry and ready to really look at. I'll hold it up a little bit. But these are some very pretty seven beautiful inks from um, Robert Oster from the Ink Journal um, Ink Flight Box. And I will link you where you can go if you're interested in the Ink Flight Box. We have the book this time on writing um, by Chris Batty and the beautiful little <laughs> cute as a button little button pin with the octopus and the fountain pen on it. And just lots and lots of fun that we'll have with these seven ink samples. So, And you, I'll be sharing them with you. We'll be writing with them and testing them and doing a little series. So I think I better go for now because I don't know if I've ever made a video this long. But thank you very much for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.